What's up guys? Today I'm going to go ahead and tell you a story. But it's not just any story. It's a very special story. It's not a stupid story about some Minecraft YouTuber who's a pedophile. Well that's actually kind of interesting. You guys might want to check that out. Apparently a bunch of Minecraft YouTubers are pedophiles. Who knew, right? This is a story about a video game that I used to play back in high school. But it's not just any video game. It's a video game that I managed to actually profit from. And through about a two-year period, uh, when I was in high school, I actually managed to make over $100,000 playing this game. Now, you might be thinking, that's bullshit. That's absolutely impossible. There's no way you could ever make any, any kind of money like that off of a video game. And I'll also go ahead and tell you that this doesn't have to do anything with what you guys probably know me by. This has nothing to do with Twitch. This has nothing to do with YouTube. It has nothing to do with any of that. This is completely buried in my past before anyone knew anything, back when I used to keep everything pretty much privately into myself. And honestly, that was probably for the better. But this used to do with a video game called Dungeons and Dragons Online. Now you're probably thinking already, oh my god, this is the most bullshit thing ever. This is unbelievable. I don't even know where he's going with this. And this has obviously got to be a big lie. But it isn't. And I swear that this is absolutely 100% true. And uh, I will do my best to go ahead and explain to you guys how what I actually did, I wasn't a genius. I didn't do anything that crazy. I just managed to take advantage of the situations that were given to me. And I managed to be at the right place and at the right time. Which is kind of true for a lot of things in life. If you think about it, anyone who's really successful or has gotten anything done, there's so many people who have tried to do it. And one of the keys to success is just being at the right place at the right time. And that's kind of what happened with me. So, I'll go ahead and start. Back when I was in high school, I was a complete nerd. I had virtually no friends. I talked to nobody, really, except for other people who used to play video games. And in high school, <clears throat> I actually had a computer with me. And at every opportunity given, I would sit and play games. I would literally be the kid in class who sat in the corner, opened up his computer, which yes, I went to a school where they actually allowed me to do that. I don't know why, but they did. And I would sit and either watch videos or play games or do something that I wasn't supposed to do. So I was a complete nerd and that was pretty much my entire life. Back in high school, I got into a video game called Dungeons and Dragons Online, which still today is around and still today is actually a pretty fun game. It's not that big, it doesn't have a huge fan base, it's not like World of Warcraft, it wasn't like EverQuest or any of the games that had, you know, millions of people playing it. It had a fairly small player base, but the kind of people who played the game were very committed, and the kind of people who played it were the kind of people who honestly still play the game today. It had a very small, niche, very close player base of people who were all Dungeons and Dragon nerds. People who liked the whole D&D system, dice, Dragons, Dungeons, I don't know what else Dungeons & Dragons has in it, because honestly, I wasn't a huge Dungeons & Dragons nerd. I just had a couple of friends who wanted to play the game, and I decided to, to join them. So I started playing the game. Everything was fine and dandy. There was nothing really that crazy about it. And then I got addicted to the game, just like I get addicted to any games. And back when I was in high school, I spent every single hour of free time that I had playing this game and I ended up getting very good at it. I managed to get to the max level, get all the good gear, you know, developed strategies and all this shit, you know, all the basic stuff. It applies to pretty much any game. You play it for a while, you get really good at it, you know, pretty basic, right? I also managed to meet some friends playing the game. Um, I met a lot of people who were all Dungeons and Dragons nerds. And we all had a fun time, we all grouped together, we all role-played together, we all rolled dice together, trying not to roll a one, trying to roll critical hits, you know, all that Dungeons & Dragons shit that most people probably find incredibly nerdy. But we all played the game together, and, uh, you know, everything was fine and great. And as I got better and better at the game, um, I started to be able to farm loot and gear and items, and currency, gold, just like in any game, right? <clears throat> and just like in a lot of games, I ended up uh, getting so much currency and so much gold and items that I didn't need it for myself anymore, right? 
what was I going to do with all this shit? I, I couldn't use it, you know? Uh, I didn't need the money. There was really nothing for me to do with it except to, well, break the rules of the game and sell it for real money, which is exactly what I did. Um, I took a whole bunch of stuff that I earned through the game through playing all day, every day, and I sold it. And at first, it really wasn't that much money, right? And it never actually got to be a ton of money. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you go and you farm a video game for items, you're looking at maybe 5 to $10 an hour, and that's even really too optimistic. It's probably less than that. You might make a couple of dollars an hour just farming dungeons or farming gear or doing whatever you do. But it wasn't that much. I may I managed to make maybe, um, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars a day or something like that, selling 50 dollars of items here, 50 dollars of items there, and again this was all against the rules, right? So I was breaking the rules of the game. It wasn't illegal, which some people get very confused about. It's not illegal to sell things in a game, it's against the game's rules because they don't want you selling items because it takes away profit from them. So I ended up selling items and I ended up selling stuff and I developed a lot of connections, right? I developed a lot of connections with people who uh, eventually just came to me when they wanted to buy stuff. Just like you do in any business. Um, these people would buy stuff from me and then a couple of days later they would message me and say, hey, do you have more stuff to sell? And because I saved up so much stuff to sell, I just developed so many connections with people that pretty much whenever I got stuff to sell, I immediately had somebody that would buy it. So I had a steady, small income of maybe like 20 to $30 a day, right? But if you do the math, even over two years, that doesn't even come close to $100,000, not even close. You might be able to make, you know, money to buy some video games or money to buy some small things here or there, but that's not anywhere close to the amount of money that I'm claiming to have made. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm lying? No, it just means that I haven't told you the whole story yet. So, um, this developed even further, and uh, the next step was I actually managed to recruit people to my, I don't want to say it like this, but to my army of people who would farm stuff for me and who I vastly, vastly underpaid. That sounds really rude and it sounds really mean and I was not a nice person. I was a douchebag, right? I would never ever ever tell anyone how much money I made through selling an item. For an example, I could have, you know, plus one fiery war axe of destruction. That's just an example, right? I could sell a plus one fiery war axe of destru destruction to somebody for five dollars. But because I was mean and douchebag and I was trying to make a lot of money, I could find people to buy this item for $1 or $2, like pretty much 20 to 30% of how much I sold it for. So I started to use all my connections of people that I knew through playing the game to form all these business connections and my business grew, right? It grew from me farming items personally and selling them and me being the only person who actually farmed things into me actually asking at first just a couple people which then turned into dozens of people which then turned into like 40 or 50 different people or even more than that I don't even know I lost track of so many business transactions and everything that literally all day long I was just constantly either emailing or skyping or messaging or talking on TeamSpeak with people over various item transactions, right? And again, the game isn't that big, right? So I pretty much destroyed the entire server's economy by doing this, and this definitely caught the attention of the game maker, which was Turbine at the time. So I'll explain more about that later, but this definitely caught their attention. And because the game wasn't that big, a lot of people kind of knew that I was doing this, right? But for a while, I was able to keep it somewhat on the down low. And all day long, I would just be doing transactions, buying items cheap, selling them for a lot, and instead of making twenty, thirty, forty dollars a day, I was now making several hundred dollars a day. And this is when I should have been content with what I did, and I should have been happy with it, but greed kind of took over. And now comes step three, which is where I really blew it. 
And this is the part that kind of ruined my whole business. What happened next is I had people, I had so many connections with the game, and I had so many people that I knew in the game that eventually people ended up messaging me exploits and things that you could do to abuse certain mechanics of the game, right? And of course, any gamer knows you shouldn't exploit because you're going to get in trouble and it's not good for the game. But because I wasn't a good person and because I was kind of a douchebag, I instead found a way to profit from this, right? I instead took these exploits that people messaged me and they were anywhere from as little as being able to teleport easier around the map to as big as being able to duplicate items. And I took these exploits that people messaged me and again I was talking to so many people the entire time that just this massive amount of information was just constantly, I was messaging people these things, people were messaging me exploits, people were selling me items, it was just a complete chaotic mess. But I took these exploits that people were telling me, and these were friends as well, and because we had we just played the game so much, and we all knew so much about the game, and we were all the best at the game, these things, we just figured them out naturally, right? And for the most part, we either did one of two things with them. We either just ignored them because they weren't worth our time, or they would somehow get us in trouble, or the other thing is we kept them to ourselves. Because if you're going to exploit, which you shouldn't, rule number one is don't go and tell everyone because it's going to get fixed and the people who do it are going to get in trouble. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and instead of doing one of those two things, I decided to do option number three, which is ultimately what actually ended up getting me in trouble. And that is, I ended up selling exploits for real money. That's right, as crazy as it is, I sold the information of exploiting the game to my business contacts for vast, vast amounts of money. And I'm talking about a thousand dollars or more to each person that I sold the information of big exploits to. And there were all sorts of conditions and criteria that, you know, this was a whole business that took place over several years. There's so many criteria and conditions that I did this in a way so that I could sell these exploits to as many people as I possibly could before too many people knew to the point where it got fixed, right? Because obviously when it comes to exploits, if it's not supposed to work, if enough people figure it out, then eventually the gaming company figures it out and they fix it, right? Which, which obviously happened, but I would find a way to maximize my profit and tell people who I first of all knew would never tell anyone, then tell people who I thought might tell people, and then ultimately sell it to people who I knew were just going to blab it out to everyone, right? And I managed to maximize my profit by taking this information and taking these exploits. And because the game was not perfect, it wasn't like um, a super huge game like World of Warcraft or something where things are patched really quickly and the programming is very, very good. There were quite a bit of exploits in the game and these things took a while to get fixed and there were definitely things that you could abuse in the game so it's not like there was any kind of shortage of exploits right these things they existed and i found a way to profit off of them so in my late latest stages of my dungeons and dragons business adventure i managed to take all these exploits and sell them for very 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 large amounts of money and that in combination of constantly selling items and getting other people to farm items for me and sell them to other people, I managed to make a lot of, a lot of money, a lot more money than I knew what to do with uh, for somebody that was in high school. And this is kind of what got me started in the whole gaming path is I managed to do something that I thought was absolutely crazy and insane and ultimately it had its downfall. Um, the downfall was, I'll go ahead and show you guys, but the downfall was this. I got a letter, I got banned from the game, not just my account, I got a whole bunch of other accounts banned, all my accounts that I owned, all my credit cards deactivated, you know, they pretty much blocked me from using their service and they told me uh, personally later on to not play their game anymore because 
I was ruining it. And again, the game was so big, or so small, sorry, that the kind of activities that I were doing were actually really crippling the server. And eventually I got caught and busted, just like anything in life that you're not supposed to do, right? So that's the lesson. The lesson is, if you get too greedy and you do something that you're not supposed to do, eventually you're going to get caught. And that happened to me. But I managed to make a very, very large amount of money doing this. Over $100,000. So that's my story. You guys can go ahead and take it, and you can go ahead and think what you want of it. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to. That's totally fine. But um, a lot of people really enjoyed the story back when I uh, used to tell it on stream. And that's exactly what I did. So uh, hopefully for those of you guys who did like it and did enjoy it, uh, I thank you for watching. Feel free to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And uh, of course, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. So thanks again, everyone. More videos coming soon. And that is the story of how I made over $100,000 in high school playing a video game. Take care.